subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates dear viewers in today's video i am going to share names of three companies that are well placed to ride the growth opportunity in india's space tech industry but before i get there let me give you a quick overview of india's space industry and the factors that are likely to propel it in the coming year in 2020 india's space economy was valued at 10 billion dollar by 2025 it is expected to reach 13 billion dollar while an almost 6% kagar does not sound impressive there have been sharp developments in this industry that could lead to a huge wealth creation for certain players Mainly dominated by ISRO, the space industry in India was open to private players or went through its deregulation phase in 2020 to 21 with the launch of Indian Space Association. Its founding members included L&T, Tata Group, MapMy India, or C Info Systems, Walshan Naga Industries, and OneWeb. The privatization in the space could open doors for many players in the sector. You see, the scope of space industry is vast. It ranges from space exploration, designing rockets or launch vehicles and satellites, cryogenic engines, satellite components, drone-based applications or tech applications that enable space exploration. Commercial satellite imagery, satellite TV and satellite navigation are some examples of commercial use of space. Its future evolution could include space mining and space tourism. So how can investors approach this opportunity? Well, if you try to look for beneficiaries, the search results in startup. India boasts of over 100 space startups with investments in the segment touching dollar 68 million in 2021. The race for space is crowded by these tech startups that are witnessing a boom in funding. Take a look, and these startups seem to be doing something right. For instance, Thruva Space Private Limited successfully launched Thibault One and Thibault Two satellites into Earth's lower orbit. Another Telangana-based startup, Skyroot Aerospace, tasted success with Vikram S, India's first privately built rocket, thus breaking the monopoly of ISRO. Skyroot aims to put a satellite into orbit next year, and that too at half the cost incurred by established companies like Virgin Orbit. The technology it is counting on is 3D printing, which it believes will help it build rockets in just two days. Its next target will be to make reusable rockets. Now India's focus on cutting cost is not surprising. ISRO's Mars mission after all was less than the budget of the Hollywood movie Gravity. Now other key space startups include Pixel and Agnikul Cosmos. While it is good to know these developments, a common investor has limited scope to ride the growth in space economy through startups until these companies get listed if at all they become public. So of the listed companies, I am not going to talk at length about companies like L&T and Tata Group that are taking great initiatives and building capabilities in the space industry of India. That's because these businesses are huge and quite diversified, and at this stage, the contribution of space economy in their fortunes would be limited. So let me share three companies in the listed space that could witness significant upward swing with the growing opportunities in the space exploration. The first is Aventis. Within space economy, the satellite launch service is going to be the fastest growing segment with increasing private participation. And Aventel, with its experienced promoters, established track record, and strong balance sheet, is well placed to make the most of this opportunity. A microcap valued at just seven billion rupees, Aventel develops customized solutions for inset-based mobile satellite services as wireless communication. The company is focusing on small software defense radio and small satellites. As more companies plan to launch small satellites, it will be a big boost for Aventil. The company enjoys strong in-house R&D facilities, certified by DSIR, Government of India. It is specialized in integrating technologies related to wireless front-end embedded systems, satellite communication, signal processing, network management, and software development. The company has been witnessing steady growth in its setcom, data, and radio frequency subsystem. It offers unique and innovative solutions. Which are not met by other customers or clients. As per the rating agency report, its setcom products are proprietary in nature. Its promoter is a technocrat with over three decades of experience. Its customers include Istro, the Boeing company, DRDO, Bharat Electronics, L&T, Indian Navy, and National Institute of Ocean Technology, amongst others. Apart from space tech, the company is also a key beneficiary of the rise of defence sector in India and of the indigenisation of this industry. Further, it has set up a manufacturing facility in Andhra Pradesh to offer indigenous medical devices. 
Aventil has acquired 4 acres of land in Telangana, electronic city of Hyderabad, at a price of Rs 1 crore per acre. Here, it will build a facility for radar small satellites. The facility is expected to be operational by November or December 2023, that is in almost one year. The CAPEX plan is Rs 25 crore to be funded from reserve. The key risks in the business are that business so far has primarily been dependent on tenders. The shrinking of budget towards space economy investment could have an impact on the order inflow. Further, given the nature of the industry, there is high receivable. The client concentration risk is also high with 80% of its revenue coming from clients that come under Ministry of Defense. The near-term risk could be semiconductor shortage and supply chain disruption. The company enjoys healthy financials. It recently crossed a milestone with touching a revenue base of Rs 1 billion for the first time along with healthy profitability. The management has suggested that there is a short business over next 2 to 3 years and the business momentum is likely to be strong. The company has an unexecuted order book of Rs 2.3 billion to be executed over the next 2 years. It expects order inflow of Rs 60 to 70 crore in a year. The management is confident of achieving 25% growth with increase in profitability of 15% to 20%. The second company on the list is Midhani or Mishra Dhatu Nigam Limited, a PSU based in Telangana and listed in 2018. It is a small cap company with 44 billion rupees market cap. The company operates one of the few metallurgical plants of its kinds in the world. It supplies high strength steel for rockets and satellites and castings for semi cryogenic engines or satellite launch vehicles and fuel tanks. It manufactures super alloys, special purpose steel and other special metals. It also claims to be the only maker of titanium alloys in India that have huge applications in aerospace industry due to titanium's low weight and high strength properties and its ability to function at high temperatures. The company has supplied alloys for ISRO's Kaganyan mission. It's a PSU with 74% ownership of the government. Apart from space economy, Midhani caters to defense segment products such as bulletproof jackets, armored steels to protect vehicles, and armored applications in various tanks, atomic energy, and aeronautics industry. The company has supply to missiles like Akash. Space segment accounts for 35% of its order book, while the rest comes from defense. For FY23, the company expects revenue of 1,000 crore. The management expects to maintain EBITDA margin of 30% to 33%. The third on the list is HEL or Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, another PSU. The company has been a key participant in India's defense program with specialization in aircraft manufacturing and providing its maintenance and related overall services. It has already been manufacturing liquid propellant tanks and launch vehicle structures for Indian rockets and has been a supplier of equipments to ISRO for Gaganyaan mission. In a key development, its integrated cryogenic manufacturing facility was inaugurated in September 2022 at Bangalore. With this, the company will cater to the entire rocket engine manufacturing under one roof for ISRO and will boost self-reliance in manufacturing of high-thrust rocket engines. The production is expected to start next year. The company's order book stands at Rs 839 billion. It has backed orders in satellite launch vehicles working in consortium with LNT. The cash in the balance sheet is almost 18% of the market cap and the debt is still. The stock offers a dividend of 1.8%. So these were the three businesses that I believe will ride the progress in space exploration and will participate in the space economy growth. Please note that the inclusion in this list and a discussion of potential business prospects does not reflect any view on the stock. I would strongly recommend you to not treat this video as one of the stock recommendation but for knowledge purpose only. If you found it useful, do like and forward it and share your feedback in the comment section. Do not forget to subscribe to Equity Master YouTube channel to get an alert for future videos. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.